Hello and welcome to the Kosh. I'm your host, Timber Smith, and uh, the Kosh is a podcast that spotlights people who have an association with Oshkosh or the surrounding Fox Valley area. I know I usually don't say that at the beginning of the podcast, but you know what? I've been listening to other podcasts and I've decided I'm going to up the game for 2022. Once again, pod, uh, Kosh listeners, how are you doing out there? I'm super excited to be here again with you. Uh, we're back. Uh, we've we've kind of had some breaks in here. Uh, I know you all know how the holidays go. The holidays are holidays, and God knows, you know, the funny thing is you have the holidays, and you get you usually get some time off, right? But why does it feel more busy than when you're working? Like, it's nuts, right? It's just bonkers. So that's what's been going on. But know that we are super excited to be here in uh, 2022, uh, back with you. And um, we're going to be giving you a great show. And as always, you know what's coming. I am super excited about who our guests are this week. Um, I don't know how I keep getting these amazing guests, but these things happen, right? Some of us are lucky like that. So... Um, this week's guess is, and you know what, I'm already messing up because, you know, uh, prior to this, I was supposed to do what I'm supposed to do, which is uh, get, how do you say the last name? I am horrible in slaughter. I've slaughtered many a guest last name. Uh, this is a thing. Um, but we're going to give it a shot. So this week's guess is and we've got two guests, uh, Jason and Rachel Kimichek. Is that correct? Pretty dang close. Yep. Pretty close? Yep. All right, give it to me. Kimichek. 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 Okay. So uh, Jason and Rachel Kimichek. Luckily, I will only have to say that once during this show. <laughs> <laughs> and that was right now. How are we doing this morning? Wonderful. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, welcome to the Kosh. We're excited to have you here. Uh, are you ready to jump in? Yes. I think so. All right. Good deal. So what we're going to do is we're going to start it off. Um, can you please share a little something about yourself and, uh, what is your connection to the cash? Sure. Uh, well for me, I was actually more or less a transplant around the kindergarten time frame, And then in the fifth grade, we moved out towards the Winnie County area. And, uh, so, I grew up in the country and loved it, went into the service after high school, came back, did a bunch of stuff, and then went back to school at the Fox Valley Tech in Appleton and then ended up gravitating towards a company here in Oshkosh and then purchased a house in 2016, and then I've been here ever since. Okay. Uh, what branch? Uh, Active Army. Active Army. All right. Well, you know, we're, we're big on this show for the military, so thank you. Absolutely. And um, all right. And and when you say, so you've kind of been in the area, but not in Oshkosh. Is that what I've gotten? Always Wisconsin, though. Uh, correct, except for when, when you were military. Right. All right. Um, and Rachel? Uh, let's see. I grew up and was born and raised north of Green Bay in a tiny little town. Probably not many people know where it is because you drive right by it. As you head up to Marinette, uh-uh. uh, 41 O'Connell Falls, if anyone knows where that is. O'Connell Falls. Falls. Yes. Now, let me ask this. Now, here's the funny thing. O'Connell is one of those weird words that I actually probably do know how to spell because I'm from Wisconsin. But if I wasn't, I would totally slaughter that name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is there an O'Connell and an O'Connell Falls? Yes. Rival towns. Oh. They're rivals. I did, right, for real. Well, so For like sports and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, that's like yes. Winnicani and Amro. Oh, yeah. I did not know. And when you say small, how small are we talking? Like 2,000 people. That's small? That's small. You know, I graduated the class of 120, which seems big for a small town, but. Okay. Okay. So it kind of falls. Okay. Yeah. And what else? Uh, let's see. I grew up um, in that area. For most of my life, I have lived in Green Bay or Wisconsin area, and then I met this guy next to me, met Jason, and mm. then then I found a job and then moved in with him, was it 2017, uh, 2018? No, it was like June of 2018. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
So then I've been here ever since. Ah. So somehow he he lured you in. Yes. <laughs> She lured herself. Man. Oh, yeah, no, nah, man, you're supposed to. You're supposed to take credit, man. You're supposed to be like, yes, totally. But I was on board the whole time, so there cool. you go. All right, I like it. All right, so first segment. Are we ready to jump in? Absolutely. Yes. First segment is what in the world is going on with, and that is where you start off with the phrase "what in the world is going on in, going on with," and you uh, tell us what's going on in your mind. What, what's what's on your mind? Oh, what in the world is going on with food delivery? We tried to get food delivery last night, and it was not a good experience. Oh, wait, you share. Oh, so, you know, I got a gift certificate to DoorDash, and I'm like, okay, well, let's have dinner last night. And even, like, we ordered it, like, a couple hours ahead of time to have it delivered at a certain time. And before the snow started. Before the snow started. Mm. And when we did, it... Like two drivers went to the restaurant, but then they never came with our order. Then the restaurant just completely canceled our order. And at that time, it Bruh. was about seven o'clock. Bruh. And it's, we were very hungry at that point and cranky hangry. Oh, so mm-hmm. there was some, some hangry going on. Oh, there was. Yes. All right. So what? I mean, whose fault? Is it DoorDash's fault? Is it the restaurant's fault? Was it, you know, I don't know. Let me let me ask this important vital question on this one because I'm curious. Did you put a tip in there? Yes. Okay. Because oh, you know, yes. you know, I've read these articles about how like these delivery services, like if you don't add a tip, they choose what they want to pick up and deliver, and mm-hmm. therefore they don't pick the ones that don't have a tip. Well, the drivers actually, when you looked at the DoorDash app, they were probably there for I would say 45 minutes to an hour and a half trying to figure out what was going on, and they'd never moved. Oh, so, we, so you think it's the restaurant. We, we do. Yep. And it, we didn't order anything too weird mm. either. And no. It's like, how are you going to be out of shrimp? How are you going to be out of ramen? How are you going to be out of broth? Oh, yeah. that's, that's, a mm-hmm. weird, that's a weird one. So that you've already given away what kind of food this might have been. Oh, we kind of did. <laughs> possibly yeah i think so it's okay look it's okay to call it out for what it is if it's if they didn't you know they, they're i don't yeah. know it's right. like if they did run out why didn't they try to get a hold of us like, mm. we're flexible okay well i'm gonna throw this out there because i don't know where you ordered from but uh the go-to for chinese food in case this just happened to be chinese food uh, I think is uh, China One. I will oh. 100% agree with that. Like yes, China China, China One good. is the joint. Like that place over, and I've been going to China One, I swear to God, I feel like it's been 15, 20 years. I don't know if it's been open that long, but it's been oh, ever, ever. I took the four off of that, so that's a long time. <laughs> uh, China One is just consistently solid. Mm-hmm. I've never had a bad meal from there. Uh, unless I ordered stuff I didn't know what it was and it was just bad because I didn't like it, but it wasn't their fault. That was my fault. Uh, but they're consistent. It's solid. And you get you get a good drop of food for the amount of money that is. Yeah. I've always been happy there. Yeah. Okay. This was not China one. It was not, no. Uh, okay. Well, good. Then I can keep singing their praises. Yes. <laughs> I like it. All right. Jason, what do you got? What in the world is going on with? I mean, what in the world is going on with? Did I write something down? (laughs) I don't know what I wrote down. What in the world is going on with the weather? I mean, I really feel like that this time of the year reminds me a lot of uh, back in like 1994 where the weather... We didn't have any snow until after January. Mm. We did not have a white Christmas. Mm. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people miss that this year. Yeah, that wasn't fun. No white Christmas. Uh, I'm going to have to be like, I'm one of them people that I'm perfectly good because there is no nostalgia for me and white Christmas. Uh, There's been plenty of them. Let me, let me, we can skip that part. Like. I'm, I don't want no white Christmas. I don't want no polar vortex Christmas. You want to excite me? Give me an 80 degree Christmas right there. There's something in Wisconsin we ain't really got. That there would make me excited. 
I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I know so far in my in my close to 50 years of living here so far uh yeah, uh don't remember any of those Christmases per se. I don't think last year though, I, if I'm correct about the weather, I don't think that it really snowed until after January. We um I don't think we really got snow before in December for some reason. I don't, I don't remember I don't that remember. far back. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. All right. Well, that's fair. The weather is a little hinky this year, uh, but I think the Farmer's Almanac uh, warned us that this year we we're, we're going to catch it a little bit this year. Um, right. See, I am like a fair weather um, winter kind of guy. I either want a lot of snow where it doesn't turn into slush and ice or nothing at all. But I like the fact that when the snow is on the ground, um, a lot of the stuff like looks less dirty from all the slush and whatnot. So that's fair. I just um, my thing is driving in it, and you know that I I'm kind of a I like snow because I like using my snow blower, and that's about it. I do enjoy that quite a bit. I'm not gonna lie. And then uh, after that point then I don't really like driving in it. I'd almost rather have cold polar vortex than snow. Yeah. I got a Jeep for a reason. Well, I, hey, <laughs> I understand, man. I, look, I'm not, I'm not mad at you. I'm just, I, I get it. I get it. All right. Um, my, what in the world is going on with is what in the world is going on with short concerts? Seriously. So, like, here's my gripe, y'all. I, you know, if, if y'all knew and y'all listened to past episodes, I shared with everybody, Timber was going to, like, the Ludacris concert. And then, I'm not going to lie, I snuck and went to the Nelly concert, too. And here's my gripe. Were they good? Yes. Ludacris was fantastic. He hyped the crowd. He did everything he was supposed to do. Like, I felt really good about it. But my man, I don't think my man was on stage for a full hour himself. Oh, no. I, you know, I got we got like an hour of the DJ and then waited time in between there. And then he comes out. He, he was geeked. And then, like, I, I really do think I don't think that was a full hour show. And Nelly, I don't think now, Nelly, I ended up leaving a little early because uh, let me let me give you a what in the world is going on with with that, too. What in the world is going on with Nelly and country music? Like, seriously? Yeah, that's how I felt. Look, I'm not mad at crossover. And I'm not mad at country music. But what I'm mad at is Nelly. You go to a Nelly concert, and guess what I want to hear? I want to hear old school Nelly. Mm -hmm. I want to hear Nelly's best stuff. And Nelly apparently has this country album out there called Heartland. And he switched up. The whole vibe of the concert when he went to this. And I was like, man, bruh. Like, he had it. He had it. He had this in the palm of his hands. And then he did this. He switched over to this new album called Heartland Music, or the music he was doing from it. And it just, the vibe and the place all switched up. And I was just like, man. Maybe it'd be a country USA. Look. Oh, they don't even have that no more. You know, uh, I remember watching something with Gene Simmons and somebody actually asked him something similar, and he said, you know, or they asked to the effect of why he doesn't come out with new material. And he's like, you know, when I have all the concerts and the world tours, people aren't coming to see the new stuff. They want the old stuff. We've tried sneaking some new stuff in back in, like, the early 80s. People weren't having it. And I still make a boatload of money singing all the old songs. So I'm still happy. And it's true. Like, you know what you know. Like, uh, if the new stuff are is hits, sure. Mm-hmm. And he did. He did some of this stuff, you know, the crossover stuff where he, he, he you know, I want to say like with Tim McGraw, but Tim McGraw was not there. But, I mean, he did the song or his part of it. And, I mean, he was a good performer. Ludacris was a great performer. But you can't just switch it up on us like that like in that crowd we 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 you know we're talking about a crowd like these were some of the biggest concerts we've had in the kosh in a minute uh we're coming for a reason you can't do that so number one you can't leave in an hour and number two you can't bring out a, just all this 
new crazy on us. Like, give us what we, you know, that's all I'm saying. All right, I'm I'm done, y'all. I done vented it out. I didn't I didn't gave it to y'all. Kosh listeners, if you know if if you agree with me, I would love to hear from you. Once again, ask the kosh at gmail.com. Ask the kosh at gmail.com. Cause you know what? I know I can't be the only one out there that feels like this right now. All right. We ready to jump into the next segment. Yeah. Uh, all right, next segment, word association. I'm going to say a word. You tell me what comes to mind. First word, food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah! I like it. Bro. <laughs> All right. Uh, honey, what are you making for dinner tonight? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. He's, he's the cook. <laughs> he's the cook. Do we got a fave? Um, I have a few developed favorites that I can do in a pinch. So, like, case in point, like last night when we were hangry, I uh, had to throw my mad skills down and do the, uh, basically the 20-minute uh, spaghetti sauce with the, some protein in there. Didn't have my meatballs. Uh, I usually go for the Johnsonville meatballs in the air fryer and then throw them in there. But uh, we had some, like, the Jim, Jimmy Dean's, like, uh, sausage crumbles. Threw that in there, angel hair pasta, uh, some bread knot or garlic bread knots, and it was like, okay, that's a that was that was pure survival, hangry, hangry, uh, potluck cooking. Oh, for sure. And I mean, I've got MREs in the basement. Oh yeah. So I, I do. I too. didn't want to like. You didn't want to throw an MRE at her. I didn't yeah. want to throw that on the family. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I. You know what? I'm not gonna lie. I got a few MREs in the basement. <laughs> because and actually i usually keep an mre in my office just in case for some reason i have to hunker down i at least have two thousand calories ready to roll um yes and for y'all out there that don't know those are uh, m- uh meals ready um you're yeah, ready to eat yes and uh military packaging good old stuff all right um next word cocktail beer uh that is Okay, so I gravitate towards beer more than a cocktail, but I have my three favorites because it's like a 3366 split. Okay, please um, share. I like a brandy old fashioned sour with marinated mushrooms in it. Mm. Is, that, is that a sweet marinated mushroom or a pickled marinated well, mushroom? Well, the marinated mushroom kind of has like a, um, just a little bit of sourness to it, but then it's got like some savoriness to it. And whereas your pickled mushroom just has that, like, punch of vinegar in the face, mm. which I don't care for in the mushrooms itself, okay. the it just adds more complexity to the old-fashioned. Got it. And then the, um, I love the local uh, Blue Bobber from Fox River Brewing. Mm. And then out of the area, I like Dragon's Milk. And that's one of my go-to from, uh, I believe it's a, it's a brewery up in Michigan. Okay. I'm a wine girl. Yeah. I let's see. They, Aldi's has some good um, fruity wines that I like. Mm. They have like, um, oh, what is it? There's like a pineapple one they have in the summer that oh, I, I go there and grab every one I can. And oh, you're that person. <laughs> I'm you're, that person. You're, you're the reason that when we go there to try to find those, we can't find them. Exactly. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See, I know exactly the wine you're talking about because that is my daughter's go to wine. And I do yep. believe that is a nice seven, eight percent wine for like three or four ninety nine. Yeah, very reasonable. Yes, that is a fantastic wine. And yes. Shout out to all these y'all. Yes. <laughs> all right. Um streaming. Well, I'll start. I'm a big Witcher fan, so I'm going through season two just came out week ago to a couple weeks ago okay so i've been watching season two geeking out what's that on netflix that's on netflix mm-hmm. okay i've seen the previews have not watched an episode if you kind of like the the fantasy lord of the rings ish kind of genre you'll you'll like the witcher okay oh yeah lost in space lost in space yeah will robinson the newer one on netflix okay uh it's they're on season three. It's the last season, but it's just been phenomenal. Um, and with, especially with like kind of like Hollywood and the whole COVID thing, I think we had to wait two or three years for season three. Oh, so 
Same with The Witcher. We had to wait longer for that, too. I feel like that right now about Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. Like, if we could just get Stranger Things, like, I feel like it's been three or three years waiting on Stranger Things. It seems about right. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Um, Shop local. As much as possible, with the caveat, sometimes you got to sneak Amazon in there because it's just convenient because there's certain places when you go to order something, kind of like from the movie Old Brother Where Are Thou, it's a geographical oddity and they're two weeks away from everywhere. However, I've come into the instances with, um, I have 3D printers at home. So I went down to Kits and File to pick up a, um, a center finder. And it's usually about anywhere from like 3 to $6. They said that they could have one in two weeks. I went on to Amazon. It was going to be like three or four days because there was nothing in Prime. So I just pulled up a file and I had one in two and a half hours. Okay. So that's fair. Yeah. I always believe in trying to shop local whenever you can. Yeah. Do you have any local favorites? You already said kits and file, and uh, we've we've definitely talked about that. We celebrate that place because that yes. is kits and file is that place that when you don't know, they know. You can go there for almost anything, and I love and, and I'm always amazed. You can go in there and ask for the most obscure thing, and that one dude will know where it's yes. at. Yep. What aisle, what, whether it's on the top or the bottom and what corner and what bucket, the whole nine. And I'm just like, oh, my God, that's just amazing. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, totally. Kits and File, um, Menards, even though that's like the big box store, um, I believe that it is, you know, when you can't find something or if Kits and File has to be closed, uh, I hit up Menards. Um I've gone to the Crumb Hour uh, when I worked f- uh, for some friends. They would pick up stuff from Crumb Hour versus ordering in bulk off of like Amazon. Um, other than that, most of the local places I would say are more um, restaurants. Oh yeah. What about you? Yeah, big into the restaurants. Yeah. All right. Um, hobby. Well. One of my hobbies slash, I guess, a side hustle is the 3D printing, um, which developed into using 3D print, my 3D printer to um, make a stencils for leather patterns, which was the segue into uh, leather crafting. Okay. So the leather crafting and the 3D printing. All right. Uh, for me, that would be photography, even though I don't do it often enough. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Okay. Is that, I mean, is it purely a hobby or do you actually shoot weddings or anything like I, that? I don't do weddings or anything like that. It's more like um, landscapes and things like that, but without really being able to travel, you know, like become really a homebody these last couple of years, it's just been hard to kind of really get out and just, you know, be out there more. Okay. And COVID. COVID. Oh, that C word. (laughs) Uh, I think, I don't want to say it's like been a blessing in disguise for us, but we've definitely taken advantage of, as far as things go, um, people that want to shop more local instead of waiting on the uh, Amazon truck or the shipping. So it helped launch us more into the the niche bespoke locally source source ethically made items and so that's been more of a blessing for us um having gone through covid it sucks <laughs> and i got hit pretty hard like almost ventilator hard so yeah i i i saw um some of the posts that you put out there and it it sounded, it sounded rough. Just sounded real rough. Yeah, it was. And I laugh at it now, but I mean, you know, I would equate it to like being in prison, um, in solitary confinement because you can't go anywhere, and you can't just roam around the halls, even though they're like empty. Um, you could you don't even get the option of like actually taking a shower because you're hooked up to so much crap. Um. 
Yeah, there was a day that I got to watch Harry Potter from like 7 in the morning until like noon the next day and didn't have to change the channel. But um, as far as like having family come by, uh, without technology, I it would have been far worse because I was able to video chat with my wife. I was able to video chat and call um, friends that I usually would keep up with every day and especially a couple of friends that were actually going through COVID at home and they were isolated, so that was um, probably uplifting to them to know that, <laughs> that they're probably better off than me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I like to, like, we got married in early October, and I, I jokingly tell Jason, you spent a third of our marriage in the hospital already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in sickness and in health, you had to test that really hard, didn't you? I did. <laughs> How long did you end up, uh, were you in for, if you don't it mind? Was, so um, we hit, we were um, basically self-quarantining for, I think, um, 13 to 14 days before uh, things really hit the fan for me. And then that was another 12-ish days that I was in isolation at the hospital. Okay. So, yeah, about a month. Yeah. Okay. That's serious. Well, we're super happy to see you uh, back on the mend here. Oh, for sure. And uh, and you sound good here on the Kosh, so I'm sure uh, Kosh listeners will support that 100%. Awesome. All right. Um, on to the next segment. Um, Kosh Hidden Gems. And uh, that is where, is there anything here locally that you think is a hidden gem? Like something, it, it might be something everybody knows about, but maybe it's something about that that people don't know about. Or is it just something that you do or you really like to go to or utilize that um, you think others might not, might, might not truly uh, see the full value? Um, I would say probably right off the get go, like, you know, as far as like um, food or drink, like Omaro's 314 pizza, Jansen's, um, those have been kind of a staple as far as um, just throughout the years and newness coming to the area and or but the uh, I kind of like going to the thrift stores once in a while because it gives me a little bit of inspiration for the old to become the new to be repurposed or um, just bring in the kind of the past and make revamping it. You got a favorite thrift thrift store? Uh, not really. Um, I like yesterday I went to a new one that was out at, I didn't catch the name of it, but, um, it used to be like a bait shop over off Algoma and it was like the ye old goat. And then, oh, yep. so that is now like sort of a thrift store. And like, I went on to Facebook marketplace, looked for, uh, like a, a folding bench stand for a surfacing tool for down in the shop. And they had a couple of them, one out there, and I was surprised. Like, I thought it was just going to be, like, a storage unit, and some guy was opening it up. But it was a full-on, like, thrift store. And I was like, well, there, here's another hidden gem. Yeah. I've never gone in that place, and I'm, I'm, a pretty, I'm pretty big on uh, thrift stores, Goodwills, uh, uh, Vincent DePaul's, whatever. I'm, I'm all about it. Uh, it's my version of being green. Yeah. <laughs> if I can, if I can find something that somebody else owned and it was used and it's not in bad condition, and I need one, I'd rather almost buy it used than buy it new if it need be. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, for me, uh, let's see. Did you hear about that pop up restaurant that's in Oshkosh? Oh, um, um, the French. I think it's it has French cuisine. Yes. Uh, what was what was the old place that it was in? It. Was um, Primos. Primos, Primos, yes, in Primos, yes. yes. Um, and this place is called. I think it's Parm, Parm, Parm. Wisconsin. I think. Parm. Um, I actually have some of my artwork hanging up in there for the pop up restaurant, and oh. we went there when they opened on uh, Veterans Day, and the lamb was really good. Oh. Yeah. It, it was good. It was like you know, I, I hope he does more pop up restaurants in the area because that was really good. Well, he's, yeah. he's staying there right through the new year. Is that correct Some, right now? Sometime in January. All right. I, I, I didn't make my appointment yet, but I do kind of want to check it out. But now you've, you've motivated me. Uh-huh. Yo, it's take really the good. misses there. Oh, no. Got to gotta take the misses. That's the whole point. Yes. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Bruh. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Um, what's the cash need? Uh, for me personally, I think the cash needs um, more in the area for the arts. You know, I'm a, you know, I, I do watercolors and, you know, we'll, I guess we'll talk more about starting the, our businesses. But, you know, when we, when I think about art and art stuff, I'm always thinking about Green Bay because they have Art Street. They have Artie Gras. There's a lot up there that is for the arts. And I, I would like to see more of that happen down here. Like, I know it's kind of starting, but it's certainly not as popular as, say, up in Green Bay. I honestly think the Oshkosh area needs a leather store and not a leather goods store, but kind of like a Tandy or like a Springfield leather because uh, most often, you know, because I am a disabled vet, I time my appointments when I go to the Milwaukee area to visit Tandy and that there really isn't anything else around unless I order off the internet. But there, there is nothing that replaces going to a store and actually feeling the leather and seeing the quality of the hides and or picking up some tools that you might be interested in. So, okay. So, all right. More art. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I think Oshkosh is, uh, we're making moves. I think so too. But for right now, um, I've, I've never, I don't know a lot about green Bay, but I would say Appleton, is really Appleton does have a lot of arts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Appleton has a an art focus, um, and they do a really good job with mm-hmm. it. So we uh, we'll catch up, right? I think so. Yes. All right, and uh, I'm not sure where the I know nothing about a Tandy's. So uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tandy's is like a brand. Oh, and they're like nationwide. They send out catalogs, but. You know, when you go to their store, like the whole center of the store and then all the way back is just nothing but stacks and rolls of leather. Wow. And it's not just the same leather. It's like, you know, sometimes you have like some of the fur on the cowhide and they have, you know, they're stacked with like almost like a color palette of like, what do you want? And then you just go down and then all of your tools, supplies, dyes and whatnot are on the sides. So then you kind of just grab your leather, turn around. Everything is like usually right there for in sections for like hardware and what you need. And it just smells awesome to be in the store too. So, Oh, well, yeah. Leather does have that, that cool smell. Like it's a thing to it. Not as cool as fleet farm. Fleet farm has a smell. (laughs) (laughs) It smells like tires. (laughs) Fleet farm does smell like tires, but I don't know. There's something about fleet farm too. That's comforting. Right. It's a good, it's a... For sure, like the kind of old-fashioned kind of farmy grain mill um, mixed with, like, uh, the tire smell. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you got to bottle that up and sell it. Sell <laughs> so, uh, it, yeah. Uh, Fleet Farm. Oh, Fleet Farm? Yeah, OD <laughs> Fleet Farm. <laughs> Maybe, hey, you might not want to say that too loud. All of a sudden, you'll see it on the shelves, and you're going to be like, oh, my God, I said that, and that's my idea. Right. Right? So, <laughs> fair enough. Um, time for the next segment. It is the Naughty Slash Heroes Corner. This is your opportunity to um, say, uh, share, um Put somebody in the naughty or the hero's corner. It does not have to be a person. It could be a thing. It could be an organization. It could be, it could be anything you want it to be. Um, what do you got? All right. Well, I'd see. I would like to nominate in the hero's corner. Great neighbors. Uh, special shout out to Gwen. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hi, Gwen. I'm, I'm gonna have to uh, agree with that one yes. right there. Yes. Yeah, she is just wonderful. Great neighbor always there to help and you know you know we we reciprocate in kind whenever we can and you know she's just so sweet uh just for kosh listeners if you don't know no gwen is literally our neighbor and uh gwen is kind of the bomb.com love 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 gwen and mike uh been living next to him uh for 20 years for us and um 20 years plus and um you know what they always talk about like Good neighbors make or break your happiness in your neighborhood. And uh, we just happen to be lucky enough to live next to uh, 
some of the people who are just the salt of the earth. Yep. They're amazing. For sure. All right. I would have to, since I, you know, it's probably not fair just to steal the same person. They're <laughs> awesome. I'm going to nominate my buddy, Eric Collier. Um, uh, he helped me find the house. Um, even though, like, I found it, he jumped through every hoop to make sure that I got the house. And then, uh, especially with the whole COVID experience, um, he was one of my go-to people, you know, when I was feeling down or whatever, or when he was feeling down, we talked to each other a few times a day. Um, most recently he stopped over to help me pull some tools out of the back of the Jeep. Um, and you know, he was actually the best man at my wedding and I couldn't ask for a better best friend. Yep. Like that. All right. So these are these here are very personal heroes. They are. Okay. All right. I like that direction. That's that's good energy. Good energy in the space. All right. Now is time to get down to business. 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 Um, it is the topic of the week. Uh as cash listeners, as you know, the guest pick their topic of the week. And this week's topic is Starting a small business in COVID. Um, where do we want to start? I guess I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just a uh, cash listeners, just so you know, we just had the finger pointing game happen here. <laughs> and at the and like all of us married men know in life, uh, the wife won. So starting a business in COVID. Oh, my God. Um, I didn't plan on starting a business. I thought, you know, for the next foreseeable future, I was just going to have a side hustle. But when the gravity of the situation is, is that when you're unhappy at your job and your job is basically telling you that you're unha- they're unhappy with you, um, and then you have a really good support system and friends that are like, yo, if you walk away, we got you. We've got work for you. I got calls left and right like, hey, I hear you're uh, thinking about walking. Um, we could use some help. And then that launched into um, a few months of like really digging down and digging deeper and figuring out what I want to do. Do I want to go back to school? Do I want to start a business? Do I want to, I don't know. And I was just looking around me and the hobbies that I was developing made money like on the side for the side hustle. And I was like, well, if I add a couple things, I could make this into a tangible business and not be bored because I feel like sometimes when you go through out things and you're the type of person that can get bored easy, that if you have a few things in there that are in different areas, like for me, the 3D printing, the leather working, the uh, making custom pens, uh, get, jumping into duck calls here soon, and now we're adding just before the holidays, we're playing around with cutting boards and then all the Christmas and the Halloween decor. Um, it really gives me a semblance of peace to be able to do that different thing. And with um, some people that we talked to last year and earlier this um, spring, they were like, yeah, we totally, like last Christmas, we bought all local handmade items and stuff. And it was just like, you know, we should really jump on this movement before it becomes a thing. And then there's just way too many people out there. We need to build a brand on this Uh and capitalize on this and become the go-to people that other people are trying to mimic and whatnot. It's better to be in the front of the line than the back of the line. Exactly. And that's where um, I started building the business of K factor makes. Okay. Can you say that again? K factor makes K factor makes. Okay. Um, Is there a website? There will be. I'll be working on that today. <laughs> <laughs> I so like the, it. The website is kind of like since everything's been so organic. Yes. And through friends and posting on like the next door app and right. Macari and uh, Facebook and uh, a friend that I was on active duty with uh, got a hold of me through Instagram. That's where most of the stuff that I keep updated is because that's where people are are trending but the website's coming 
Okay. Yep. Uh, the only reason I ask is just because, you know, as uh, people listen to the episode, people are going to be like, oh, wait, I want to learn more. I want to know what, what is this that he is speaking about? And um, where can I see what the products are? And then we, we, you know, we need to share. We'll, we'll, share we'll give you the links to share. All right. Links will be in the podcast notes. Please uh, peek in there, pod, uh, Kosh listeners. All right. Yes. Anything else? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then, yeah, like um, when COVID started, I didn't work for a few months. And so it kind of, you know, it really left you kind of just wondering, like, what am I going to do? Do I still have a job? What should I do? I don't know. You know, so there, there were days I freaked out and all I did was um, play video games on the, like the Witcher, huh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, there's a theme. There's a theme. Um, but then I started uh, really working on myself and my my art. And so I do a lot of watercolors. And um, I like to take old, weird medieval art. And I like to really make it modern and accessible for people. Uh, modern for, you know, today. Like I do a lot of like, uh, pillow, like pillow covers are like my best sellers. So Ooh. it's really cool. Yeah, and then that's not the only thing I do, but wait, there's more. Um, and then I also really, this year, I really started working as a virtual assistant for people. And I really have been developing a lot of software skills around that. Um, hey, wait, tell me more. Tell what, is me this more. Vir- what is this virtual assistant? Because that there, that my eyebrow, if you didn't catch it, yeah, totally it said, boing. hey, yeah, I pulled the rock. <laughs> So uh, what I do as a virtual assistant, I work with a couple of clients and some of them, um, I work on like their, their emails for their clients. I design their emails. I, um, you know, I, I help them with marketing. I help with um, email automation. I help with uh, social media, adding products to their stores, the, you know, whatever kind of platform that they use, whether it's like Wix or Shopify or um, WordPress or things like that. And I just, you know, I really help small businesses so that way the business owner can spend more time creating what they want to create and have more time for ideas and not get so stuck on the back end. Because it's very easy to get stuck on the back end and get stuck in all the technical and all the details. And I make people's lives easier. And so that way they can be more successful. Oh, my God. (laughs) Like, I need that commercial. (laughs) Matter of fact, I need those services. <laughs> Likewise. Uh, yeah, right? You know what I'm saying? That's that there. Right? <laughs> that, that the virtual assistant. That yes. that sounds amazing. Yes. Okay. Do we do we have a name? Uh, my business name is Rachel's Creative Boutique. Okay. And um, I can definitely give you links to that as well and a link to schedule a call with me, no obligation, to see if um, if we can if I can help um whoever wants to chat with me like okay. a little, little video chat do a video chat yeah. and um from there you how does that process work can you explain that a little bit more like okay so because i'm thinking i know somebody out there is listening right now saying you know what i need an assistant yeah. i totally need an assistant and mm-hmm. what does this virtual assistant mean and is it is it super expensive or pricey or what, what is it what does that entail so how I like to do it is um, when we when we talk, um, I like to really try to find out what is like the the thing that you really don't like to do or the thing you get stuck in or what just doesn't give you joy because you know if you work on something that doesn't give you joy, it just kind of bogs you down. Right. And then we kind of we look at that and then we kind of see like um, you know and then that that's where everything kind of does start to get customized. Um, you know, because someone might want um, a monthly newsletter, plus they want um, uh, like, um, like, oh, hey, you bought you bought something for me. Great. So then here's like the, the post purchase email and then, oh, I need a review email. And then like all these types of automations that come after a purchase. Right. Um, th- that's just a very broad example. But there are there's just so much, you know, and then I try to pick a couple things to start with that I can take off your hands immediately. And then once we build a relationship, cause we are working on, you know, I'm working for you and your business. So we kind of build a relationship. And then once that gets more established, then we really just kind of 
um, start working on adding more, more that I can take off of you. Okay. Yes, that's that's just uh, the Kashi listeners are very used to Bosco having his moment <laughs> on almost every episode because that that is Bosco. He's got to have a shout out too, right? Oh, Bosco gets Bosco. many shout outs. His, he could care less. He just wants treats. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just who he is. Bruh. <laughs> okay. Um, so two businesses. Uh, there's a lot. There, I mean, uh, let's let's just review a few things because um, throughout the episode, there's a lot of stuff. So there is a new marriage, yes, and there's two new businesses, and all during a pandemic. Yep. Yes, that's a lot. It is. That's it's a lot. chaos. We Organized keep busy. Chaos. <laughs> Organized <laughs> chaos. All right, but it sounds like there's success there. There is. Um. Especially like I, I really feel that when you have a product that can be super customizable, especially like a pen or a cutting board or even a duck call, that you're not focusing on like one thing and that's all you're doing is a cookie cutter thing. Like, yeah, sure, you can make a hundred thousand things and then put a big price take on them and then everybody's got one. But I like to focus on the unique things and make them to more tailored to the customer like what's their favorite color you know do they like gold do they like chrome what kind of like vibe are they getting do they like steampunk do they like medieval and then with the kind of the cutting board deal was basically you know when you look at something do you want a business logo on there do you want something that like really touches your heart maybe you want like your child's birth date on there with their name and then we go through and do like an epoxy inlay that looks pretty stellar. So um, that's really where the custom craft comes in and it makes it unique and it makes it memorable. And people want to just really grab on and keep that stuff. Mm -hmm. Are these cutting boards wood? Yes. Okay. Is, it, is there a favorite kind of wood you, you like to do? Um, I probably gravitate more towards the American hardwoods. Uh, I like, you know, the maples. I like walnut um every once in a while you got to have that stripe of like purple heart in there or, or wenge is there and then we talked about some leather yes earlier um is there what are the pro leather products um so i do make leather hats and bags all hand stitched no machine required so he made most of the hats for the groomsmen for our wedding yep mm. So I made but, my top hat and I made some more like the uh, Peaky Blinder style flat caps. Okay. Um, so there's that. Then there's like some masks and that are more like steampunk, um, like the Plague Doctor mask or like a something that kind of looks like you're running through some like smoke and gas and stuff from like World War II. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Okay. Um well, is there any information uh, you'd like to share, contact information you'd like to share with the listeners at this time? Uh, we'll put it in the podcast notes, but just in case, is there any contact information you want to share with the listeners, uh, the cash? Uh, so if they want to reach out to you, they have a method. Sure. Uh, Kfactormix at gmail.com. Kfactormix on Instagram. Kfactormix on Facebook. I think that's most of the social media outlets. Uh, there's a couple of them, but I don't think I branded them as K Factor Makes quite yet because I'm just kind of feeling them out. Okay. And then um, if anybody wants to text, texting usually works since this is the age of spam calls. Hey, wait, I'm going to say that we're, we're going to put no phone numbers over the air because yeah. okay. we yeah, never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because I don't, you know, there's a, believe it or not, I got. Uh, podcast listeners overseas in foreign countries um wow. and, and uh so and and you know shout out to everybody overseas i appreciate y'all out there listening but you just never know who's listening that's true right that's true. <laughs> so, so uh we're gonna save we'll save that and we will put the appropriate digital contact information into the notes 
but Sounds I just good. wanted to give yeah. you a chance. What about you? Uh, for me, it's the email for um, myself would be Rachel's Creative Boutique at gmail.com. Okay. You want to say that again? Rachel's Creative Boutique at gmail.com. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Any last things you want to share about starting a small business in COVID? Um, yeah, don't be afraid to dive into something, whether you have a full-time job or whether you're uh, walking away from something, fail to plan, plan to fail. And don't be afraid to start something. Uh, that's the yeah. biggest thing that usually holds people back is just that the fear. Get rid of the fear, dive in, whether it's just something small that you can handle for a couple hours on a weekend or something that's going to consume your evenings for the foreseeable future. Take the small steps and just do it. And for me, it's uh, the perfect is the enemy of done because, you know, you can easily stay in the world of perfection and never launch something out into the world. And sometimes you just got to be like, nope, it's just got to go. Let's just get it out there. I totally know where you're coming from mm -hmm. because that is actually how I felt about the podcast. I was hemming and hawing for a very long time. And finally, I was just like, you know what? I just need to go ahead and do that first episode and uh, then do the second episode and we'll make it a little better. And, and I'm always hoping that as we we do these episodes that they, they, we're getting better with time. So oh. I, I, I and can. And that's how you learn. Yeah. And you I learn can, by doing. Yes. I can totally appreciate that philosophy. All right. Well, it's that time. Uh, Kosh listeners, you know, once again, as I always say, we are a work in progress. Uh, we are always trying to improve. There are some things that I'm hoping to roll out in 2022 to improve the show. We're going to try to refine ourselves a little bit. Uh, I've been reading a lot of articles and listening to a lot of other podcasts, and we're, we're going to step up a step, even though... I'm super proud of what's been created um, and and where we're at and, and the people. You'd be surprised how often I run into somebody who just walks up to me and says, uh, you're Timber, right? Yeah. Oh, man, I've listened to an episode of the Kosh. You got the Kosh, right? Yep. And I'm always stunned at the reach and uh, how many people are actually listening out there. So I appreciate you all. And you know Please, please, please do not ever hesitate to email us. Reach out to us. Let us know how we're doing. Tell us your comments, if there's ways we can improve, uh, if you've got any suggestions. Um, please send those emails to askthekosh at gmail.com. Once again, that is askthekosh at gmail.com. Um, I'm always surprised. You know, some of the emails that I've gotten more recently were people who found the podcast who are moving to the area. And they're like, you know what? I kind of got a feel for it. I kind of think I know. I know some places I want to go check out. I I want to go eat at this place. I want to go check out this place. And I just think that's really cool, right? Because you, you just never know. You never know. Sure. Yep. So um, thank you out there for those who uh, felt that this was a way to make you feel a little more welcome coming into the Kosh. We appreciate you. All right. So... You know what time it is? Oh, my God. It's my favorite time. <laughs> it is shout out time. So shout out time. Please, please, please. What do you got? What do you got for shout outs? Okay. More finger. Points. Oh, this is the <laughs> more. If you could have just watched what happened. There was a there were two finger points that went back and forth. I don't know who won that one, though. Uh, I think she won. So I'm going to go first. <laughs> <laughs> Correct answer. So. so uh, I'm going to give a shout out to my parents. Uh, they're awesome. They're they have always uh, shown me the path to never accept failure or to say no to things. So that really opens up that mental switch to just keep driving forward. I'm going to give a shout out to my wife's wonderful parents, Lynn and Larry. Um, they have such a generous hospitality and um, made the, I guess the, uh, Decision to ask Rachel to marry me uh, so much easier because uh, they're a wonderful part of our family. Um, and then my buddy Eric Collier, who has been a rock-solid best friend. 
Well, you took my thunder because I was going to say my parents. So <laughs> say your parents. Well, all right. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, shout out to my parents. They've just been wonderful and helping and, um, you know, coming down here and helping us with house repairs that have been well needed. And I'm surprised my dad didn't have a shotgun when you asked him. <laughs> I could marry me, right? Is he that dude? I kind of always hoped he would. <laughs> wow. See if we could scare him off. <laughs> he tried to scare me off like, right in the beginning. It didn't got, work. Got past the dad test. <laughs> got past the dad test. Yes. That's a big test. Fair enough. All right. So parents, anyone else? Yes. Um, you know, wonderful Gwen and Mike across the, you know, next door neighbors. Guess they, they're wonderful too again. Oh, yeah. You Can't got say to. enough. Amen. Y'all don't really understand. Gwen and Mike are the best of the best. All right. So uh, my shout outs for this week. Um, you know what? I'm going to give a shout out to uh, JJ's Chicken and Fish. You look, if you don't know nothing about JJ's Chicken and Fish, it's down in Milwaukee and they got uh, uh, they got a bunch of locations. But let me tell you something about that. They are serious. Every time I go into Milwaukee, it is. I must stop by a JJ's and the chicken or the fish or their shrimp are no joke. Every time it's reliable. I love them. Um, and they make me happy. They not only make me happy, they make my wife happy. They make my daughter happy. They make my parents happy. You doing what you do when you make everybody happy with what you cook. So I'm going to give a shout out to JJ's chicken and fish. Those from, the, those from the 414 know what I'm talking about. Um, Shout out to Bar 430. I went to Bar 430 the other week for my first time for the Sunday brunch. Ooh, how is it? Oh, my God. It's serious. You know what? Them cooks, you know, the thing about 430 is I they got some serious. Who's ever in that back room? In, in, the, in the back kitchen, handling a business, they serious. They do a nice job every time. Now, like, I don't go to 430 all the time, but the times I do go, it's always good food. And I, I don't know what it is, but they do it right. So I'm going to give a shout out to Bar 430. And if you have never gone to the Sunday brunch, it is fantastic. I suggest uh, having one of the many various types of their Bloody Marys. Um they, man, this I had a specialty Bloody Mary and and I forgot. Yeah, I wanted. Uh, I'm not even gonna try to jack it up, but I know for sure that there's a there is a barbecue one and there was a bourbon one. Uh, yeah, I just slid that bourbon in there, you know. Uh, yeah, and I might have tried both, maybe. I, I will neither confer nor deny. <laughs> All right, and then my last shout out uh, locally is gonna go to the Roxy. Went to the Roxy, and the thing about the Roxy is this: it always is what it is. You're gonna get what you get, and it's always amazing. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. I don't want nothing else to say. Everybody, if you're from the Kosh, you know, and if you're not from the Kosh, you need to know. Go check out the Roxy. Uh, make sure you make an appointment. Otherwise, you ain't getting in. All right, so. All right, now for the final part of the show, parting words of wisdom. This is your opportunity to give our Kosh listeners some parting words of wisdom. Don't be afraid to make anything because as soon as you become afraid, it stifles the creative process. You hem and haw, you back up, and you're going to live with more regrets. So don't be afraid to make anything. I can't beat that. <laughs> I can't beat that. I feel the same way. You feel the same I, way. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so the words of wisdom. All right. That's that. Yep. All right. Well, you know what? It's that time. This was an amazing, amazing show. I appreciate y'all for being on. Any last words? Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thanks for being a wonderful neighbor. Cash. Mm -hmm.